Ethereum is just too expensive. It's slow. Nobody's ever going to use it. It's all just a scam, <laughs> right? Does any of that sound familiar? So I had this kind of stuff all the time. Those are some of the main criticisms of Ethereum. And in some ways, there's a lot of truth to all that stuff, except maybe the scam part, all right? Ethereum is slow. It's expensive. And this is bad for the protocol in the short term. But I'm here to tell you uh, that those problems, that the end of those problems is literally in sight. I'm going to talk about that in this video today as a blockchain developer who works the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis, all right? So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. The whole idea behind Ethereum is to create a world computer a public blockchain that supports smart contracts so that we can create you know, programs that power Web 3.0, a new decentralized internet. Anybody who's used the technology directly realizes that we're not quite there yet. Ethereum itself isn't ready for prime time. It doesn't support you know, hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. Transactions are expensive, especially since the price of Ether has gone up quite a bit in the past few months. So you might have experienced this yourself. Maybe you've tried to trade tokens on a website like Uniswap. This is one of the most popular Ethereum-based applications powered by smart contracts. So if you want to buy a token, then there's a pretty hefty transaction fee to do this. And for most people, they don't want to make big trades. They want to make small trades. And this fee is going to kill all their profits. These are without a doubt huge problems because for a lot of people, it makes the technology basically useless to them. But there's good news. The end of these problems is literally in sight for two big reasons that I want to talk about right now. So the first thing is that if you're using Ethereum right now, you're using Ethereum 1.0. So if you hold Ether or if you've held any other ERC-20 tokens, which are just cryptocurrencies that are built on top of Ethereum, or you've used an app like Uniswap, you're using Ethereum 1.0 as it is today. This is not the final version of Ethereum, and that's something really important for people to understand. We have a brand new version of Ethereum, Ethereum 2.0, that's coming out relatively soon on the grand scheme of things, all right? So it's already here in one sense because it's rolling out multiple phases. We're in phase zero right now, which is a part of a multi-year transition into Ethereum 2.0. At least we think that's about how long it'll take. Nobody knows for sure. The plan with Ethereum all along was to create version 1.0, knowing it wouldn't be the final version, basically to make some compromises to get it out there before it can be transitioned into the Ethereum that we really want it to be, which is Ethereum 2.0, which would be a lot faster, more scalable, cheaper, ready for prime times so that can support mass adoption of blockchain technology. You might be thinking like, hey, wait, we can't wait that long. We need Ethereum fixed right now. So that's okay. There are some things we can do right now to Ethereum 1.0 to greatly improve this problem. So in the immediate future, we can really help this with layer two scaling solutions. So what does that mean? Well, when you build blockchain-based applications, you can build them with multiple layers. So layer one, you can think about like the base blockchain itself. So everything like Ethereum, all the Ethereum transactions can get settled on layer one, but you can build a second layer on top of it that can handle some other computations that finally get settled on this layer one base chain, okay? So you might think like, why wouldn't you just do everything on layer two if that's faster, if that's cheaper? Well, it's because there are some sacrifices that get made. And in some cases, those sacrifices are okay, but you don't really want to sacrifice the final result, which is the settlement on the main chain. That's the big value of the public blockchain in the first place. It's an immutable trust layer where we can verify all the activity. We know it's secure. We know it's immutable and then it won't change. But we don't have to necessarily do every single action on this layer one blockchain because that's what we're doing right now on Ethereum. So if you go use a website like Uniswap, which I showed you a second ago, you're literally interacting with Ethereum with pretty much every button click, every transaction that you sign is talking directly to the blockchain itself. But when you implement a layer two scaling solution, some of your actions can happen on the second layer that will still have a good deal of security. It'll still have a lot of these benefits, but it'll speed things up. It'll be cheaper. And then the final result can get settled on layer one. The good news is layer two scaling solutions are basically here. All right. Some protocols have already implemented layer two scaling solutions. Some are still in the experimental phase. And I think it's just a matter of time before lots of protocols come to a consensus on the best scaling paradigms. And we start to really see this take off. So I think that's going to happen definitely inside of this year, probably in a matter of weeks to months, to tell you the truth. You know, it's not financial advice. Nobody knows for sure, but that's just my read on things. All right. And it's going to happen a lot faster than all of Ethereum 2.0 is going to get shipped. And when they do come, it's going to make Ethereum a lot more user friendly, a lot cheaper, a lot faster. So I've watched the battle for layer two solutions for quite some time now. And part of the challenge here is determining which one's the best. So this is an article published by Vitalik Buterin himself, you know, the mastermind behind Ethereum. 
talking about layer two. So if I remember, I'll put a link to this down in the description below. You can check this out for more in-depth explanation. But he also talks about the different scaling paradigms. So there are a few different ways to attack this problem. One are state channels. Another one is plasma and then rollups. So those are the three major ways to scale on layer two. And there are different pros and cons to each of these methods. Like some of them are application specific. Some of them allow you to, you know, seamlessly plug in smart contracts, all that kind of stuff. Some of them don't. So the one that I'm particularly paying attention to right now is rollups, all right? And there are two different types of rollups. There are ZK rollups and also optimistic rollups. Uh, but optimistic rollups are the ones that I am particularly watching in the short to midterm. So I'm so excited about optimistic rollups. I think it's the best fit for Ethereum as it exists right now with all the smart contracts that are currently deployed to the network with the composability of DeFi because it uses something called the OVM, which is the Optimistic Virtual Machine, which is compatible with the EVM, the Ethereum Virtual Machine, as it exists right now on Ethereum 1.0. So the big benefit here is that your smart contracts will work with optimistic rollups. So that's so important because the DeFi landscape out there, out there is all powered by smart contracts and all the protocols are composable. So they plug in together and all these applications that are currently being used and work in production don't have to change. They can use optimistic rollups with the OVM and, and they don't have to make any changes with the contracts. And so that's why I think this will probably win out. So optimistic rollups are not the fastest scaling solution, but this benefit alone makes it way better than the other solutions out there, in my opinion. So the project that you need to watch out for is optimism. So this is an implementation of the exact paradigm that I'm talking about. Okay. So that's one of the reasons I said the end is literally in sight for this and that this problem is going to greatly improve with Ethereum is because optimism has already soft launched their solution on the mainnet. So that happened on January 15th, which at the time of recording this video is not very long ago. So that's a huge deal. And I think it's just a matter of time before we start seeing this pop up in applications. And that's why I say we could be potentially weeks away from this. And if not weeks, then I, I'm still gonna go back on my original prediction, which I made in my last couple of videos about, I think layer two scaling solutions will be here in 2021 and this problem will be greatly improved. So here we can see how much it's actually improved. So this is a demo they did with Synthetics, which is a decentralized application. It's a decentralized protocol. And they were able to reduce the gas cost by 143 times, all right? And greatly increase the confirmation time to 0.3 seconds. So that's, that's a huge deal. So imagine your, you know, $100 trade on Uniswap is now less than a dollar, all right? And not sitting there for minutes, like waiting for your transaction to confirm or hours if you pay for like a lower gas fee or something like that, okay? So now the thing to understand is, this is not going to get us to the level of like visa level speeds. Like if we want to get to hundreds of thousands of transactions per second, or maybe even a million plus transactions per second. Okay. We're going to wait for Ethereum 2.0 for all that to come to get here. Okay. That being said, we can still make Ethereum way more usable right now, way cheaper, way faster with these scaling solutions that I'm talking about. What you need to understand is that once we get these layer two scaling solutions in place, they will probably also migrate over to Ethereum 2.0. So like there's multiple ways to gain the performance benefits. One is to add a second layer where you can do some of the stuff like I'm talking about. The other way is to Im improve the performance of the base layer itself. So layer one, that's what's going to happen when we move to Ethereum 2.0. We can still multiply the benefits by improving Ethereum 1, moving it to Ethereum 2.0, and then also adding scaling on top of that. So scaling will likely stick around on layer two whenever E2 fully rolls out. And that's how we're going to get the blockchain ready for prime time so they can process a, a massive transaction volume per second really fast. And so one thing you need to really understand with these scaling solutions solutions, whether you're scaling the base chain itself or a layer two solution, is that you have these three things that are always at odds with one another. Scalability, you know, performance, uh, security, all right, how, you know, just self-explanatory, and also decentralization. So these are all things you have to think about when you're crafting a solution. Um, and these are things that you kind of move in one direction or the other when you're pursuing a new solution. So here's the thing to think about. A lot of people worry about Ethereum and they say, we're just opening up the door for an Ethereum to killer to come in place and just take the lead as the lead, you know, public blockchain smart contract platform while Ethereum trying to get their act together. But the problem is most of those competitors make some massive trade off on one of these things to achieve scalability. Maybe they sacrifice security or they sacrifice decentralization in order to achieve this. All right. And that's not what we want. That's one of the reasons this is a hard problem to solve that it's taken Ethereum so long to get to this point and to have a solution that's going to work for everybody. And this is a really difficult nut to crack. And a lot of people who claim to be an Ethereum killer, they make sacrifices in one of these other categories that kind of defeat the purpose in the first place. And even if somebody does come up with a magic solution that 
preserves all these things and makes it way more scalable and technically better than Ethereum, they have a big moat to cross, which is Ethereum's network effect. Basically, one of the reasons Ethereum is so valuable right now is because there's so many users, there's so many applications built on top of that. And if somebody comes out with a quote unquote better solution, it's still really hard for somebody to get that, to create a network effect as big as Ethereum's because it gets exponentially harder the more users you have on a network. It's the whole idea of Metcalf's law. Basically, the more uh, users you have, then the benefit and the value becomes exponential. And it makes that moat just so much harder to cross. And so that's an overview of layer two scaling and how this is going to be really good for Ethereum in the short to midterm. Okay, so right now there's a lot of pain using Ethereum as it exists today. It is slow. It is expensive. But the end is literally in sight for these things for the reason I just talked about. These layer two scaling solutions that are basically here. We just have to test them out a little more, get them integrated into the applications that exist on top of Ethereum today. And then this probably greatly improved. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, and you want to learn how to become a blockchain developer, you know, one of the highest paid professions in tech right now, then how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, then I can show you how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish over at dappityvirtue.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't need any coding experience to start today. I've helped people with zero background in programming or blockchain become real world blockchain developers. Just click the link down below to sign up today. All right, that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.